dear friend, the Lord Jesus loves you. Yes, he loves you and he wants you to also love him back. Thank you for finding time to watch this video. Do well to share it as well. Our topic today is keeping focused in life. Dear friend, when someone tells you, keep focused, what comes to mind? I believe what comes to mind is a kind of reminder to you to concentrate on whatever you are doing. It is a morale booster to encourage you not to give up with whatever enterprise you are involved in. In this piece, we shall discuss six ways of keeping focused in life. These are personal ideas, and I hope at the end, we shall find one or two to be useful to you. The seventh point of what I will be discussing with you is believe in God. Since you are a believer, a Christian, I will not elaborate further on this point. So I am mentioning it right in the beginning. Dear friend, number one, be aware of critics. This very first point is very, very important. We cannot live this life without being conscious of the fact that our every move and motive would be criticized in one way or another. In other words, criticism is part and parcel of life. Dear friend, they are either A, constructive or positive, or B, destructive or negative. A, constructive or positive criticism. This is a good criticism. What it does is that it points out to you other areas you might have glossed over or may not have paid attention to. The aim is to let you know that others are admiring your work and they wish you keep improving. From personal experience, dear friend, I will tell you that there are a few of them. If you find one, cherish him or her. B, destructive or negative criticism. This is a bad criticism. It is not meant to encourage you. Dear friend, it looks down upon your work. See no value in it and wish that you stop. In fact, this criticism may be true, but it is presented in an uncharitable manner. And believe you me, there are many of them out there. So dear friend, be aware of these critics and don't let them distract you. Take the positives from their criticisms and use them as stepping stones to achieve greater heights. Number two, know your goal. Your goal is your personal target. It is what you want to achieve. There can be the general goal and the smaller goals that will help you arrive at the general. So knowing your goal will keep you from wandering or loitering about. Your goal is your load star, just like the star that is used to guide the course of a ship. Dear friend, similarly, the star brought the Magi to Jesus. Their goal was to meet the newborn king. But keeping their focus on the star, they arrived safely. So your goal serves as the end target and guide at the same time. One quick point is that let your goal be realistic and achievable. That is why I said at the beginning that there can be the general goal 
and the smaller ones that will help you arrive at it. Number three, what is the purpose of your goal? Dear friend, you cannot live a haphazard life. You should be able to give the reason for which you are doing what you are doing. For example, my goal is to produce more writings and videos that would be eventually shared on the various social media platforms. The purpose for which I am doing that is to bring evangelization from the, in quotes, real world to the, in quotes, virtual world. I want the Christian or Catholic presence to be felt on social media because I know that many Christians or Catholics are there. This means anytime I think of them, I am motivated to keep pushing towards my goal of churning out more writings and videos. This is how I see it. Number four, be determined. My dear friend, you must always remember that Rome was not built in a day. Arriving at your goal is a journey. And as we know, in the course of our journey, we may encounter some surprises, some pleasant, others not so pleasant. You cannot not know that you will meet challenges, you will make mistakes, and sadly, some people may wish you ill. Oh yes, don't overlook that. These setbacks should be seen as moments of temptation to see whether you are willing to go the full mile and even extra. Be resolute. Set your face like a flint. Isaiah 50 verse 7. As they say, winners never quit and quitters never win. Dear friend, cry if you must. Fight back if necessary. But never quit. Number five, create time. Time is a very precious commodity. Money cannot buy it. Therefore, do all you can to utilize it well. To keep focused, create time for A, research, and B, reading. A, research. Research is the mark of a scholar. And a scholar here is not about who has the highest educational degree. Research here is about being diligent with your work to the extent that you try to find out and verify your information. What this does is that it makes you confident in your presentations because they have things you have personally worked on. This can only come about if you create time to research. B, reading. Dear friend, are you literate? Most probably your answer is yes. Next question, why are you wasting that ability by refusing to read? Believe it or not, you are among the few people in the world who have the benefit of formal education. You are blessed. Create time to read and read and read. Reading nourishes the mind. It expands your horizon. It makes you confident and it makes you a gentleman or a lady. Dear friend, this can only come about if you make time to read. Six, and the last point, relax. Dear friend, we usually hear people say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. We love to quote it when we are having fun. In truth, we cannot live our lives always working. 
that is harmful to our health. We must have time to rest. It reduces stress. Find time to enjoy the company of your family and friends and have time for yourself alone with your God. Sometimes the temptation is to keep on working for fear of not meeting a deadline. Dear friend, let me be brutal here. You are not the savior of the world. Take it easy. In conclusion, we have so far discussed six ways of keeping focused in life. As I mentioned in the introduction, the seventh and most important point is to always believe in God. We need God's blessings in whatever we do. If he is not involved, if he is involved, he inspires and directs us, leading us towards the attainment of our goal. If you have enjoyed this video, why don't you like, comment, and share it with your friends. Invite them to visit my YouTube channel, Father John Patrick Tendana, and subscribe to it so that we can all keep deepening our Christian Catholic faith. I wish you joy and peace. Thank you.